Hello, this is Mark Franklin with Streaming Media Magazine and Streaming Media Producer. And I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the camera I just reviewed on the website, the Canon XA40. It's a compact 4K entry-level uh, camcorder. Last year, I reviewed the Canon XF405, which has a one-inch sensor. This, the, the little brother here, the XA40, has a little smaller than a half-inch sensor. It does suffer a little bit in the low light, but overall it is a comparable image. Uh, if you're in good lighting, you'll do uh, pretty well with it. The XA40 is not a cinema camera. Uh, Canon makes some great cinema cameras, the C100, 200, 300, 500, and their DSLRs. Great for doing cinema. This is a video camera. It's not meant to do cinema with. It's, you can do news, documentary, but if you're looking for the shallow depth of field, this is not the camera to do it with. That said, what it does is great video for lots of situations. So I just want to take you through a couple little things on the, the camera. It does come with one battery. You'll want to get a few of them. It does come with a BP820 battery pack, but uh, I went along on Amazon and got the equivalent of a BP828, which you can see is quite larger than uh, the standard battery and will give you a about a three hour run time where this will give you a little under two hour run time. So definitely stock up on these. One of the issues with batteries on this is that when you do put the battery onto the battery mount over here and you do have it on one of these popular Manfrotto uh, tripod plates, it does block the battery release. Keep in mind that if you are going to be shooting for a long time, like a seminar or a lecture or something where the person's going to be going on and on and on, uh, either see if you can plug in someplace because you're not going to be able to access the battery release over here. It's completely blocked. Another good reason to get the aftermarket extra length batteries. The XA40 is Canon's entry level camcorder and it does come with a power supply that you plug into the wall. I'm not going to show it because they're pretty much all the same. But it does not come with a separate battery charger like some of the higher end cameras like the XF705. That comes with an actual battery charger but it's a much more expensive camera. That's like a $7,000 camera. This one at $1,500 it doesn't come with that much, but uh, along with the, the long-lasting batteries that I got, I went on Amazon and I got uh, a, a mobile charger. You can get these portable chargers for about $5 on Amazon. This one's a Nixel brand. They're all pretty much the same, probably coming out of the same factory because they've got the same design. I've seen a few of these. If you want to charge batteries while you're using your camera, this is the best inexpensive way to do it because without going out and buying an extra charger, the only way to charge batteries is on the camera itself while it's not running. One of the things I really liked about the camcorder is coming from a pro camera, the audio controls right here on this uh, little handle that uh, also has on the other side the XLR inputs and the mic mount up here. It does let you do things that you normally on some cameras just have to go into a menu and that's really tough to do when you're doing things on the fly on a shoot to go search through menu to do things. So you could just go right over here and adjust the volume or adjust mic line, phantom power, whatever you need to do. It's all right over here. If you don't need to look so professional, you can put this into consumer mode. So every so often we're all asked to shoot something where maybe they don't want professional video people. Boom. Handle comes off and you're in consumer soccer mom mode. Nobody's going to know that this isn't a consumer camera. So you can use this going, take it on vacation. Or uh, if you need better audio, you can still use the internal eighth inch mic jack that's over here. Let me get this back on here. Takes a couple seconds, really easy. Boom. You're professional again. So just in comparison, this is the battery 
from my Sony uh, HVRS270 uh, camcorder. It's an Anton Bauer brick. Here is this camcorder. They're almost the same size. It went on this huge camera. So, is it fair to compare these two cameras? Well, yeah, it is because the reality of life in uh, video production today, people are doing different things with uh, larger and cameras and smaller cameras. For the most part, these things are dinosaurs. And when you look at the image quality, this is about a 10 year old camera that I actually helped Sony design back in, uh, I think it was 2007. And it's really a great camera. Uh, one of the reasons I still use it, aside from the excellent image quality that it still puts out, is that here in California, at least, people sometimes just want the big camera. My clients say, I want something that looks impressive. So when I've got my audience there and my clients there, they know I'm a big shot, not a little guy with little things. So I offer one of my clients, you know, to shoot with this. And they're like, no, no, we want the big camera. Sometimes for the image, you got to go along with this. Even though it's 10 years old and shoots HDV, I uh, do kind of keep it up to date by uh, attaching a Blackmagic uh, Video Assist HD and it records ProRes through the HD SDI. And so it, it works out really good when I still have to use it. But uh, if I've got to run and gun it, this is my choice. In low light, uh, this guy still is a bit better. The three CCD design still has better color separation from what I've seen in lower light than this guy. This really is uh, a good little camera if you're getting started. They're inexpensive. These are about $1,500. Um, if you're doing a lot of run and gun outdoor stuff, working indoors in good light, I have no problems with this camera. I highly recommend it.